DVTM block module comes with two different layout options, the full width layout and the grid. But the grid layout is limited to three posts in a row, to three columns. So in this video, I will show you how to use custom CSS to change that. Hi, my name is Anya and my goal here is to help you build awesome websites. In this tutorial, I would like to focus on the DVTeam blog module. I will show you how you can use simple uh, custom CSS to change the grid layout from three uh, columns, three posts in a row to any number you like. So let's get to work. I'm using the DVTeam builder to design my uh, archive pages and I've made a custom body template and inside that template all I have is a blog module that's set to a grid uh, layout. But even if I uh, resize my row and make it uh, wider, my grid will still keep the three posts in a row. So let's set maximum width to 90%. And as you can see, the pods get stretched. So if I would like to control how my uh, grid looks, the best way would be to use the CSS grid. Let's have a look. Let's save that. And let's have a look how our HTML structure looks. If I inspect the page, you can see that the DV grid is using the Salvatore content and the columns and uh, posts, the articles are inside the columns and these columns are inside the a div which is inside another div. Like this structure is pretty complex uh, so it would be difficult to adjust it with CSS but if we change it back to the full width layout then you'll see that it will be much less uh, complicated. So back here, let's change that to full width layout and save. And once our block module is full width, we can use a CSS to style it because we all, all we need is a parent container that holds each element, each article is a separate blog post and they are placed inside this ETPB Ajax pagination container div. So if you'd like to take advantage of the CSS grid, we have to target the parent container and let's add a new rule, display grid. But that's not all we need because that's how the default grid looks. So let's add a template for our column structure. So grid template columns. And now we have different options we can use. Just to show you how it works, if I say 200 pixels, 300 pixels, 500 pixels. <laughs> Any value I put here, it will uh, create a column with uh, that size. Let's also add a gap between columns. So grid gap, let's say 20 pixels. Okay, but we obviously don't want our columns uh, to be uh, different. So there is a unit that represents a fraction of available space inside the grid. That's a special unit only to use with CSS grids. It's FR. So if I say 1FR, 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 that would give me an equal four columns uh, grid. I could uh, make it shorter using the repeat function. So repeat four times one FR. And this way, all I need is to change that four to any number I like, two, six, <laughs> three, and I have a different uh, type of grid. 
So hopefully that's helpful. We can use uh, media queries to change the grid for smaller screen sizes. Uh, but one thing we need to take care of is this part, the older entries, our pagination. If you see in uh, our HTML structure, this older entries link is placed inside a div, which is the only div inside that div. <laughs> our posts are articles tags uh, and div, the last one, holds our uh, pagination. So we have to target this div and make it as wide as our um, column structure. So to target that, we can use this class as a parent. But actually, let me copy this CSS first. And back in the theme builder, in the page settings, advanced section, I will place my CSS here. Obviously, we could use theme options or style sheet, uh, whatever works for you. I will paste that here and save. And now we can add a second rule that targets div inside that uh, div with that class. So the right bracket, the greater than symbol, <laughs> uh, means that we'll only target the immediate um, child element for this uh, parent container. So only the first div inside an element with that class will be targeted. And we want this. Um, there are different ways we could um, align it. First is define the grid column start and end. So grid column start one and grid column and it actually looks at lines between um, our column. So this would be one, two, three and four. If the newer entries link would be here, we want it to be aligned with this side. So and would be at four. We can't see it, but if we add a background, Let's make it back just for a moment so you can see better. So grid column start at first line between columns and ends at fourth line. If it would be three, you see. OK, but instead of using grid column start and end, we can uh, do a short version. So grid column and then from one to four, like that. Or there is a different <laughs> property uh, which would do the same thing. Um, instead of counting the lines between columns, we can use the span, span three. It will span across three columns. OK, so that would take care of our older and newer entries link. So let me copy that and back here. Don't worry about the error messages. The CSS is uh, correct. Let's remove that and also the background. OK, but we did three columns and <laughs> that's the default. Let's do four columns and let's span this across four uh, columns as well. Let's save that. And we have a lovely a grid with four columns. And if I go to the next blog page, my older and next entries link are aligned uh, nicely with the grid. OK, so maybe let's uh, let me show you how to add media queries to change that uh, layout for smaller screen sizes. So back in the theme builder, let's make that a bit bigger. And all we need is media max width, let's say 980 pixels, the tablet default breakpoint. 
and all we need is to change this template column. So from this element, Let's make it um, three columns for tablets and we have to change this as well. So this will go to our media query inside the media query. Let me move that so we can see better and spam across three columns. And one more or maybe even two more for let's three columns for tablet, but when it gets smaller, like maybe 600 pixels, we can do two and then for any screen smaller than 460, let's do one. We don't need that, but let's let's keep it safe. And now our blog page. Let's check how that looks on smaller screen sizes. Lovely. The CSS grid is very powerful. There is a lot of different things you can do with that grid. Let me show you one more uh, nice example. Let's say I want to make this article more important. This, So I could use that uh, post ID or maybe even target every fifth uh, element. But let's let's use this post ID and I could say this uh, sorry this ID with that post number and I want this to have a grid column to span across two see obviously we would need to um, adjust the number of rows, uh, number of posts on a page. But if that's, let's actually do that. Let's, instead of targeting this page ID, uh, this post ID, let's do, um, this as a parent. ET PB post, that's the class of the article, but we'll do and child. Sorry, not like that. And child five. ET PB post. Oh, I'm missing a class here. Okay, so let's add that as well. And I will also change the number of uh, posts in the uh, blog module from eight to seven per page. Let's save that. And now every fifth of the posts on a page would be bigger one <laughs> like there's a lot of different ways you can align uh, your grid with css that is just one of many examples of uh, what you can do with it i also prepared a nice freebie for you the team builder uh, layout pack for blog the archive uh, template and the single post template you can download those from my website so let me show you real quick how it looks as you can see, it also uses the custom grid. I added some uh, custom CSS to style the read more and align it and also style the sidebar. Let me show you how it 
looks on smaller screen sizes. As you can see, using the grid gives us nice equal uh, boxed layout. So I think that's uh, quite nice. And a single block uh, post. We have a nice post titled with featured image and parallax effect. Dynamic author information. Also the comments form uh, uses some custom CSS and we have our uh, blog grid as well here. Feel free to download the JSON files from the blog post link below where you can also copy the CSS I mentioned. Also remember to add a CSS class to your blog module so you can be more specific uh, when you're targeting everything. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that was useful. Please let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time.